But I want to ask you about the theater time. You worked with Samuel Beckett in, in the 60s, and it was at, at that time that you recognized how music and theater could intersect. Well, it was very important. That was a very important encounter for me. I was living in Paris at the time. I, I had a Fulbright, so I was there studying. And uh, uh, we were living, my, uh, my, actually, I was married at the time with Joanne Nicoletis, who was a very well known director. Now, at the time, she was, we were all fledgling composers and directors and actors, but uh, we began, uh, you have to remember that uh, Beckett was hardly known at that time. Uh, I knew the books. I, 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 was, I knew almost everything that was in print at the time. And then it turned out he was living in the neighborhood. And uh, we, we, got a, we got in touch with him through an intermediary, and, and he, he became very interested in our little company. We were much younger. We were, we were in our 20s. At that time, he should have been maybe in his 50s. And uh, uh, whenever we asked him if we could do a piece, he said yes. He always said yes. And we were adapting pieces from novels, and he does us do, he did it, all kinds of things which uh, his estate would never allow us to do today. <laughs> uh, absolutely, we're not allowed to do a lot of those things today. But when he was alive, it was all just, oh yeah, let's do it. And, and where did you find that music could enter? I mean, well, what, uh, the interesting thing of the, about the Beckett work, and it was similar to other work that was being done in the States with people like William Burroughs or Brian Geisens, and people were starting to work in a, a what you, we call non-narrative form. In other words, they would tell a story that, without telling the story. There would be no story to the story. Uh, and Beckett was the great master of that. I mean, Waiting for Godot was really, <laughs> there was, it was hard to tell the story sometimes. And when, you didn't know when it was over either. Uh, uh, I, I recently did music for a play of his called Play Without Words, which is really a good piece. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Bresnikoff did it uh, at, the, at the New York Theater Workshop about four or five years ago, and they, I did the music for it. So uh, I've had this. But what, I, what interested me about Beckett was, uh, and and the same thing was happening in the world of painting when we were getting into non-figurative painting. So in other words, you look at Pollock, you, it's hard to see a tree or an apple or a house or anything. You're looking at, at, at uh, abstract, abstract expressionism was, uh, uh, was a, was a non-figurative art form. Uh, um, and so that my generation of people, I was very closely connected to the art world because I began partly making my living working as a studio assistant because I, I had no way to make a living. I'd, and who were you a studio assistant for? Oh, Richard Serra yeah. for a long time. Yeah. But we were friends from our days in Paris together. When he came back to New York, he, he, had, a, he had a job. At, he was working for the Costello Gallery, and I was still moving furniture. Though uh, he was moving furniture before he did that, too. So he, I wasn't the only one that moved furniture. But, uh, uh, I got involved with him and a lot of the people. And what I discovered that what we were doing, and we were the, I could say we were the, the, truly the children of people like, uh, like Beckett and like Genet and like uh, Céline for that matter. I was, because I had been living in Paris, I knew about that, that stuff. But uh, we were looking for a form, uh, a structural form that was not narrative. And what we, dis we discovered something very simple that uh, everybody knows it now, which we call a process. So process became a stand-in for story. And it was a way of, uh, 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 and my early works were all done that way. 